here we are. This is Sex Love Psychedelics, and I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Bringing you psychosexual conversations that will leave you intellectually turned on and hungry for more. You bring up an interesting point on safety that I want to touch on. So you're talking about, you know, these dungeon spaces or these or even bedrooms that create a containment for safety. And yet you're also very fully expressed with your sexual autonomy and with your expression online and in your writings. So for individuals who want to express their sexual autonomy, um, and we're still living in this rape culture with sexual violence towards femme, women, queer, especially people of color, how, what advice would you give to them? Ooh, okay. Um, so first off, trust your intuition. I feel like that's the first thing, like trust your intuition. And when you are play, like, I would say, trust your intuition and start like how, but figure out how you can explore by yourself before you invite like other people, unless you have like a partner who, or you already love and trust. Um, I think that it's difficult because, you know, like not everybody has the safety to talk about sex online or express Mm -hmm. themselves online, depending on their job or if they have a family or whatever it is. So I think that like doing this stuff like for yourself first is a really good way to start. Like dress up in things that make you feel really sexy. Like have a night where like you transform your bedroom into like a play space, right? Like get a toy or two or watch porn or like read erotica or dress up and take photos of yourself or videos of yourself just for yourself. And like, I would just start diving in with it that way. And like, that's kind of obviously going to be a safer experience because when you start involving other people, there's a lot more to consider. Um, if you do want to play with other people and like, you are kind of looking more towards like finding play partners, um, honestly, like I would, you could use FetLife, which is like a BDSM like website. That's probably still the best way to connect with people, but Mm -hmm. like always, always vet people. Like if you're playing with somebody who says they're a dom, ask them for the contact information of two other subs they've seen and talk to them and ask them their experience with this person. Um, or like, if you're, you know, like another kind of safe way to explore, I'd say would be going to like, um, like sex toy stores or like local dungeons. A lot of the times we'll have, um, like classes and meetups and like open play parties. And like, that's a good way to get, to get in the door. But like, York, like you are the one that's making the calls. Like if it doesn't feel right, it's not like just honor that. I think it's really like a matter of knowing your own boundaries, allowing yourself to like evolve with them. And also like knowing that it's okay to say no. And that like, Mm -hmm. nobody should be touching you or doing anything without your like enthusiastic consent. Yeah. Um, I I love that you just said vetting. Vetting is so so important. important. It's really important. Yeah, we jump in because we have this desire and the desire can blur our judgment because we just want that thing. But then we end up in these situations or these dom relationships or relationships in general, working with um, somebody that that does do harm. And then are we actually able to see that or are we blinded again by the desire to to have that? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely difficult and it's tricky. And like with dating apps too, it's like, I know like if you're, especially if you're looking for like a kind of like Dom sub or DS dynamic, like be really, really cautious if somebody on Tinder is like, Hey, I'm a Dom. If they're on Tinder telling (laughs) you that they're a Dom, be, you know, wary. Like, um, the app field is really good actually for kind Uh of like more kinky explorations. And again, like I, you know, like it's on one hand, like, I do think that it's important. Like, obviously it's like so important to keep yourself safe. And at the same time, I do think that there's just like, you learn about yourself through these experiences and like, even just getting coffee with somebody and having a conversation around kink, which I always recommend if you're playing with somebody and you're meeting up with them, like, don't just play, like go get coffee in a vanilla setting, Mm -hmm. ask them about their experiences, you know, like this shit takes t- 
time. And it honestly is like a learning curve, like learning how to spank somebody or like choke somebody. Like there are safe ways to do these things. And if you want this to be a part of your life, first off, hell yeah, kudos. You're allowed to want that. And like part of the fun is like learning. So like Mm -hmm. read the books, go take classes, honestly, hire a sex worker. Like if you really want to get like, you know, tied up and spanked and you want somebody who's going to do it right, hire somebody. Like Mm -hmm. they'll also be able to have you like in a safe space to do that with like the stuff that you need, um, whatever. So, Mm -hmm. but I, you know, like, I think that committing to it as an exploration of self and then also like opening yourself up to, you know, writing about it. You can even start like a Tumblr or something where it's like anonymous or like an OnlyFans, like don't like, don't Mm -hmm. knock the internet. The internet's a really good way to find community and also to kind of be an exhibitionist if you can't fully be that in your real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely have a fantasy about that. Well, that was fun. Thanks for tuning in, lovers. And if you want to experience more ecstasy and sexual liberation, head over to sexlovepsychedelics.com and learn about how you can join me for any one of my online or live events. And while you're there, grab my free guide on sex and psychedelics. Remember, this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please contact your healthcare provider and local law before pursuing any of the products or psychedelics discussed. And one final note here, I make this show specifically for you. If you're loving the show, then be sure to leave me a review in iTunes or Spotify to let me know. Happy to be here and happy to serve. I'll see you next time on Sex Love Psychedelics.